So it's no secret that rappers come and go every single year. One moment an artist can be on top of the game, with everyone wanting a feature, and the next they can be completely falling off. What, what, what technically was falling off? You know what I'm saying? I done made 30 million, I don't gotta do- Yo, do I, do I, do I gotta keep making music, bro? I don't need to, bro, I'm, I'm rich as I don't need to make music, I do it because I know I still have fans. And with that fall off obviously comes a lot of scrutiny and public embarrassment. And the saying really is true that the quicker someone rises up, the faster they will likely fall back down to the bottom. There is a myriad of reasons for this phenomenon. For one, we obviously live in the fast food era of media, from movies to music, and even videos and online content we digest on a daily basis. Most pieces of major media now seem to lack a certain quality they possessed in the past. And I'm not necessarily just talking about from a budget standpoint. Today things seem more rushed, more formulaic, less thought out, and moments tend to come and go faster than ever before. We live in an age of information and content overdrive, and with social media, anyone and everyone can now go viral. And every day there are millions of people desperately yearning and grinding away to try and get themselves out there. Meaning when someone does make it, there is a good chance that hundreds, if not thousands of people, will try and replicate their success in some shape or form. And since most of the artists who blow up really fast do not have the fan base in place to carry them through the tough times, it's easy for these fickle fans to turn their backs on or simply stop caring about a rapper's music. There's so many parts of that era of rap where like people got fame so fast they were so young you know what i'm saying like and i feel like that was some of the foresight that he was saying not even necessarily about quote unquote falling off you know what i mean uh, you don't think he, you don't think he predicted anything i don't think he predicted shit no it's like trying to build a house with no foundation. Like if one strong gust of wind comes through, or adversity in this case, well suddenly no one is playing the music, no one is going to the shows, other artists stop hitting you up, and the industry decides they no longer want to play with you. It turns out like it's not picking up phone calls. I ain't no, I ain't no friendly anyway though, you know what I'm saying? So that, that kind of, that ain't had no type of effect on me. Like I barely called. I ain't caught I was on when I was on top. Oh yeah, and you still owe the label five albums. You gotta pay back the advance they gave you, which is really just a high interest loan. They now own your masters, they own your likeness, and they're taking most of the money from your tour if you can still do that to try and recoup their investment on not only you, but 20 other failed artists before you. Not to even mention your new lifestyle and image you can no longer afford eating away at your pockets. By the time many artists finally see this reality, it's far too late to turn back. Like even when you strike when the kettle is hot and the industry likes you, you still will likely be replaced at some point. This combined with an intense oversaturation of the music market has really affected an artist's chances of maintaining relevance for more than a couple of years. All right, I've been like number one song at da da da, -da or like, you know, album sells this, you know, and then I put out some shit that's like, I take a kind of a left turn and experiment with, you know, a different, and it does not <clears> hit, you know, and how fickle and how fast people can just be like, oh, he fell off or he, you know, it's, it's a game of, you right. know, you ride these, these waves and, and what altitude you're at and the inertia required to stay at this, like, altitude in pop culture and pop success and any of it, you know, I mean, right. how long of a run can you, because it's, it's crazy. Now with that being said, let's talk about Ice Spice, a female rapper who took the internet by storm over the last couple of years, but more recently has seen a serious downtrend in her career, and now tens of thousands of people are unfollowing her every single day. Ice Spice is a New York rapper from the Bronx who started making music back in 2021. How was that growing up there like? It was fun. It was real fun, like, you know, fighting off crackheads and shit like that. And over a year later, she would find herself going viral with her music video for her song, Munch. This was back when TikTok was turning out number one records on a daily basis, and for Ice Spice, that was really no different. How much was there before Munch, and then how long did it take for things to go crazy? Um, so there was a couple songs before Munch. It was probably like four songs, I think. From the start, she knew that her greatest asset was just that, shaking a rump, Rubbing her cooch and rapping in that New York accent made her infamous right off the bat. When I say that, I mean some people were hating on her, a lot of people were loving her, but all that mattered was that she was finally popping off. Growing up, I always would just like write little raps and 
Um, I never wrote like full songs though with like hooks and verses until I got a little older and I started to understand song structure more. But um, I always had like this like want to write basically. Even in promotional videos that she made before she went viral, it was beyond clear that she knew that her body was her ticket to fame. And at this point she's one of those people who's known more for her likeness and her sex appeal than her actual music. I feel like a lot of people think that oh I'm just like this like pretty girl that like post on Instagram but there's like millions of pretty girls that post on Instagram and like you know you have to really contribute to the culture in order to like matter. I would actually say that her existence online is more like a meme than a rapper. Now to be clear, the two do go hand in hand in her success, and she could not have one without the other. I mean recently she was on stream with Kai Sanat, he tells her to freestyle, and guess what she does out of pure instinct. Okay, let me hear you freestyle. <laughs> So much comes out, it goes viral, she signs a record deal and starts showing up doing live performances where her job is strictly to get up there and shake that ass. It was at that time that she would be seen frequently with Drake, and rumors of the two dating of course surfaced from there. Under the label, she would release her first EP, which featured more viral songs like Bikini Bottom, In Her Mood, Delhi, and Princess Diana with her longtime idol Nicki Minaj. When I met Nicki, right, for the first time in person, um, I was like at her studio and she was like doing her glam and stuff. And Were you then nervous? I was nervous. Yep. She came out, right? Yeah. And um, I was fine. But she came out and she looked at like uh, my manager, James and like Riot and stuff and my photographer and everything. And um, then she came at me. And when she came to me wow. and she hugged me, I started crying because it just felt like a, a, I, I cried, but I walked away. Like I didn't say anything to her. I was just like. This EP was a pretty massive success for her. I mean, to me, it all sounds like one long song, but the target audience definitely ate this up. It was like the perfect music for women, and I would think gay men, to get ratchet to. Songs about being a baddie, twerking that ass, getting money, and things like that. Don't get me wrong, with this newfound fame also came a lot of new people who absolutely despised her. I feel like when you're like huge, um, and people just gonna want you to fall, you know what I'm saying? But either way, as long as people were talking about her and she was still going viral, I doubt either she or her label could care less. This EP was enough for the machine to be willing to pour more money into her career, and she would really hit it big with her next single, Boy's a Liar, catching another viral TikTok song, and further pushing her image into the public eye. And if you needed any more evidence that Ice Spice was playing the game correctly, she would get a shout out and even a feature on a Taylor Swift song called Karma, which in the music industry is like getting LeBron to back you and say you're a great player who he wants on his team. The two seemingly became friendly, Taylor Swift said that she was always listening to Ice Spice's music apparently, and she was even with her at the Super Bowl, doing very weird things with her hands. And it really did seem like Ice Spice would solidify herself with the release of the massive Barbie movie last year, as her second song with Nicki Minaj would be synonymous with this Barbie resurgence. This hit actually made her the first rapper to release four songs that reached the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 in the very same year. Which is very hard for me to wrap my head around when we've had artists like Drake, Eminem, Lil Wayne, Akon, and DMX, amongst many others who have been absolute superstars over the years. Either way, 2023 was a great year for the Ginger rapper. They have you uh, uh, declaring her as the artist perfectly poised to have a breakthrough year in 2023. You feel like this is your time, this is your year? For sure. But 2024 so far has not been as kind to her, and it has me looking at her career through the same lens that I see someone like DaBaby, just two individuals who struck lightning in a bottle, who had their own unique sounds, and went super viral, and then super mainstream for about a year or two, and then once that newness kinda wears off, every song kinda starts to sound the same, and when aided by a little bit of controversy, they start to fall off. Now in the name of continuing her fast food music run, she would come out with a rather prophetic lead single for her debut album Y2K, Thank You The Shit, Fart, which was a perfect way to kick off this album. Thank you the shit, bitch, you not even a fart. Yes, that is the chorus to this masterpiece. And this was actually a diss towards fellow female rapper Lotto, as the two had been sending subliminal shots at each other for the last year. Talk about a joke of a song that many people likely had to approve before it came out. She actually has a ton of bars over the years about pooping. I'm the shit. I'm that bitch. 
I'm Miss Poopy. I'm Miss Poopy, but I never smell. An artist's debut album is definitely something that could make or break their career, and with her using this as the lead single, that led to this album selling a modest 28,000 copies. Which, let's be honest, 28,000 is not that bad for an artist of her caliber, but with the backing of a major record label, and the fact that she was technically selling this album on pre-order for over 10 months before it would even come out, and then when you package that information with all this bullshit bundles artists can now count as sales once again, you'll see that the 28,000 number is very inflated. Can you guys imagine getting this shit on vinyl? Jesus Christ. The other thing is that year over year, iSpice has lost over 50% of her monthly listeners on Spotify, while producing her debut album in the process, meaning her old songs are now cooling off, and her new songs are not hitting like the old ones. In fact, she doesn't even look happy in her natural habitat of twerking anymore. And now with this latest feud that she has found herself in, she is losing followers and fans at a massive rate. And it all really started when she decided to take a rapper named Cleo Trappa on tour with her. Basically, this Cleo person would come forward and say that Ice Spice treated her like shit during the duration of this tour. Nobody should make you feel less than or make you feel like shit because they gave you an opportunity. The two of them had apparently been industry friends for the last couple of years, but it sounds like the extent of their relationship was mainly public appearances and content creation. It's like every time she's like inviting me out, cause we never chilled on some like chill shit, bro. Like it was never like there's some chill. It was always like in the blogs the next day and the song is dropping too. So it was like, what? This girl kind of uses me for her rollouts. She was set to open for Ice Spice, but was actually only offered this opportunity one day before the tour began, claiming that the reason Ice Spice invited her to come perform in the first place had to do with her trying to rebrand her image to make it look a certain way. So the ending of July, I get a call from Ice um, very early in the morning. Cleo, come on tour with me. I miss you. Come. And I'm just like, girl, I'm not about to come on tour with you and watch you perform all month. Like, I got a nigga. <laughs> I got stuff that I could be doing. I could be getting money. I have opportunities in New York. I have brand deals. I have things that I need to focus on. So for me to travel all over the United States with you to watch you perform, kind of crazy. She's like, no, I want you to perform. And I gag. You want me to perform? She ain't never, ever, ever, ever brought me out on stage. And despite worries about the last minute invite, Ice Spice insisted that everything would be taken care of from her travel accommodations like food and a place to stay to her actual performances. Keep in mind, this was a strenuous, unpaid opportunity that would take months of her life. Now obviously, when someone goes on tour and opens up for another artist, it is usually a great chance for them to gain a ton of fans and exposure. So oftentimes, the bigger artists will recruit someone who makes similar music to them, or at least someone who can capture a similar fan base. Like back in the day, I saw Logic and Big Sean open up for Kid Cudi, and it was amazing because I knew all three artists, and so did most of the crowd. So I'm sure Cleo saw this as a big opportunity, but apparently once she would go on the tour, the mistreatment would begin. For example, she claims that she would often be sent on stage before the show was even advertised to start, meaning she was performing to an empty venue. Online says the show starts at 8? It would even say 9 sometimes. And guess what time I was going on? At 7.30, 7.45. I was going on before the show starts, so that was kind of weird in itself. Now apparently this was only the tip of the iceberg on this shitty situation. She claims that she had one day to prepare for the tour. Literally one day, so I'm just like, what do I have to pay for? Nothing, you're gonna be with me, you're good, you're gonna be with me. She wasn't allowed to bring anyone with her, and that she wasn't even listed on the lineup. And basically it sounds like she felt like she was being treated as a second class citizen, not having a dressing room, not having a hotel room to sleep in, and not being included in team meals while on the road. And we just sitting on the bus, we just like, yo, like, can somebody come with us to McDonald's? Like, nobody want to walk there by themselves. We, we take one of men with us. They like, oh, that's mad fall. Like, nah, like, where? There's a desert, it's scary, I don't know. I'm like, okay. Nobody said anything about food still. Come to find out, everybody ate. <laughs> can you believe that? Everybody ate. Guess what? They all went to a steakhouse. 
Basically, it sounds like she was not part of the plan at all, and that by the end of the tour, it felt like she had overstayed her welcome. Remember, she wasn't even getting paid, and she even claims that while she was performing, her debit card was used to buy designer items behind her back, and it really just seems like the opportunity was not worth the stress, nor the time, or the effort that she was putting in, and that the opportunities she was missing out on to be there were far greater than what this had all turned into. On top of that, Ice Spice apparently stopped talking to her at all, right in the middle of this tour and basically outside of a stylist that she made friends with she was pretty much on her own i didn't have a room i was told i was gonna be with her but i didn't have a room no room for me backstage at all i was in her dressing room i didn't have no writer i was with her i was so confused like you're not being my friend so i'm going to make more friends like, girl, it's like she wanted me to be miserable and alone, and it just didn't happen because that's not what God had planned for me, boo. As some of you may know, I probably don't know, I am a personal stylist, and I was hired as a backup stylist for Ice Spice Tour. And when I say everything that Cleo was saying is dead ass true, is dead ass true. The first thing that caught me off guard was when I first made it there, okay, I get with Spice, and me and her are cool as hell, so we just be regularly talking about shit. I see she type got an attitude, so I asked her, like, what's up? Like, you good type shit? Like, you know. Feeling her out. She like, oh yeah, I'm cool, woo, woo. It's just Cleo black ass doing too much. I'm like, damn, hold up. So now I get back in the room with Ice. She on FaceTime with Riot. She letting him know like, yeah, um, she doing too much. She blowing my scale. She was like, bitches gotta go. They asking for too much, woo, woo, woo. Bitches acting broke. Like I'm really tired of her black ass. And I'm like, damn, like, why does she keep saying this? Like, what? And let's be honest, guys, it's not rare for an opener to get less than preferential treatment while on tour with a bigger act. And you do hear a lot of stories about openers not even spending any time at all around the main act, despite them being on tour together for months. But granted, this was apparently her friend, who she allegedly begged last minute to do this with her. I took a step back and just made the opportunity what I could make it. But it wasn't genuine at all. Nothing that you do is genuine. Everything is calculated. Like I said, I was the token black friend. You didn't have your other best friend around because you said that she didn't match your aesthetic. Like, there's something very wrong with somebody that is only friends with somebody for their aesthetic. Look how you talking to me like you was never even my friend, bro. She's just like, bro, this is why you're never going to be anywhere. This is why you're never going to get nowhere. I don't know. If I was a careerless bum, why would you even bring me on tour? Lastly, she would claim that Ice Spice has sold her soul. Everybody hold hands. Hold hands, hold hands. Lord, thank you so much for bringing this amazing group together right now with this amazing stream and our amazing teams, Lord. We are all from the same place and we are all trying to get to the same place, which is the top end. We, are, we all want to experience different things in our lives, Chad, so thank you so much for bringing all of us together. And I pray that you allow us to grow on other people, on each other, and I pray that you allow us to reach any measures in this life and just watch over us daily. You bless us. You allow us to bless other people with our work and our amazing craft, and you help us enjoy this night. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 She would also share this text message exchange they had where she expressed her frustrations after the tour, and I Spice pretty much just replies in these messages that none of that was her fault and that it wasn't that deep. Later, she would even respond to these claims on a Twitter space where she had this to say. Y'all put in laughing faces, y'all know this. Y'all know this is not funny. Bitch, you not gonna tell the people how we was at an Italian restaurant and you ate so much food, you vacuum that the server was like where did the food go like stop it right now you talking about some she ain't let me to the back of her room on her tour bus she had this big ass room bitch can i play with my one time now this made people even more upset and they called out ice spice's hypocrisy for clowning this woman for eating a lot when many speculate that she's been off that ozempic weight loss program and the speculation actually got so strong that she released this like workout weightlifting video that really didn't prove anything people also claim that she basically is someone who thinks that her shit don't stink and that she has way too big of an ego for how volatile her career is at this point i mean honestly i didn't think this was like the biggest deal in the world to really like cancel so worthy but with most of her fans being women they aren't going to like the whole mean girl shit especially when it feels like she was punching down here on someone who was supposed to be her friend someone who she invited to come perform on this tour for free 
I don't know, to me, if I'm her manager, we aren't releasing any more albums, just the occasional single trying to go viral on TikTok, and honestly, the primary focus shouldn't even be on rap anymore. Like, I think she has to transition into an influencer, or an IG model, or an OF girl, or some shit like that. Because to me, the curtains on her music career are closing pretty damn fast. But I do want to know what you guys think about Ice Spice, I want to know what you think about her career. I've yet to meet, like, a big Ice Spice stan in my life but i'm sure they're out there but either way i do want to thank you guys for watching today's video dropping a like and subscribing but as you guys know it's been your boy the tan superman and some other rap beef out here needs to be covered so i'm out peace